Hello and welcome to my Ark Glacial Guide. In this guide, I'm going to cover how you can take on this boss, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The Ark Glacial is a boss with a combat level of 7,000. The boss has 365,000 life points in normal mode with 5 mechanics turned on, but this can go way higher in hard mode with the enraged scaling. The boss is immune to stuns, but it is not immune to poison. The only exception to this are the arms during the frozen core mechanic. Since this boss is customizable and accessible to even low level players, I don't really have a set in stone requirement for stats and gear. Although the bare minimum in my opinion would be 60 plus combat stats and 43 plus prayer. With the gear and inventory setup I have the exact same problem. You can do this boss at a variety of different skill and gear levels. Instead of showing you a bunch of different gear setups, I'm simply going to say, use your best ranged dramatic gear. Melee is absolutely possible, but I'm not going to recommend it as it's far easier to use ranged at magic at this boss due to the nature of the mechanics. As for your inventory setup, I do have an example on screen, though this is more geared towards hard mode. Everyone's inventory setup is going to be different, but I recommend you have at least the following things. A shield and perhaps a one-handed main weapon as well to keep attacking while using your shield. An adrenaline potion or replenishment potion. And a power burst of vitality to double your HP. These three items are the key things you want to bring no matter what you're doing. And if you're using range, you do want to be using mechanized chompers as they're great for killing the minions. If you're doing hard mode, having vulnerability bombs or the vulnerability spell with magic is also very useful for extra damage. Here's another list of useful things. Now you may or may not hear me talking about certain things in this list during the mechanics part of this video. The most notable things on this list are the invention perks being impatient, enhanced devoted and the turtling perk and of course the limitless ability which is incredibly useful for this boss when running on low adrenaline. Now since the boss is the newest update currently, you can simply use the PVMR portal to get there, but if you've never done the boss before, you'll have to walk there all the way manually from the Archaeology Guild, which you can teleport to using your Archaeology Journal, and then simply head straight south all the way to the Orange Barrier once you're inside the city of St. Tistan. Once you have one kill count at this boss, you'll be able to tune your boss portal to this location, and you'll no longer need to walk here. You can also use your Pontifex Shadow Ring if you've completed the City of Distant Quest to teleport in the middle of the cathedral and then simply walk south as well. Now the Arc Laser can be done in normal mode and in hard mode, but to unlock hard mode you're going to have to kill the boss with all five mechanics turned on in a single player instance by yourself. If you have any problems with a certain mechanic in normal mode you can simply turn it off. If you'd like to practice a single mechanic only, you can turn everything off except that mechanic and it will repeat that mechanic over and over alongside the creeping eyes, which is a mechanic you cannot turn off, but it's not really a mechanic. It simply pushes you out of the way and does a slight bit of damage. Given that you have all five mechanics turned on or you're doing this boss in hard mode, all mechanics are used at random. There is no set in stone order or rotation. You can have 22441 or 152234 and so on. Even though the mechanics are entirely random, you can somewhat predict the mechanics by paying attention to the creeping eyes, which is indicated by a little ice rocket beforehand. Let's start off by talking about the Pillars of Ice, aka Ice Beam attack, as this is the most punishing attack in both normal and hard mode. If you're sent to the far western side of the arena and there's no creeping ice on the other side, you can almost guarantee that you're about to get the Pillars of Ice mechanic. This mechanic spawns two or three in hard mode beams that deal typeless damage to you that also drain your prayer and adrenaline. In normal mode, the two pillars are fairly easy to avoid by zigzagging or perhaps searching to the other side of the arena. In hard mode with three pillars, it's slightly harder. You should start by running towards the southwestern part of the arena. You'll want to stand here until the first beam is in direct line of sight, not diagonal line of sight, but directly in line with your character. You then want to move to the other side of the arena and then start zigzagging around like this pattern you can see on the screen. I found that this is the easiest way to avoid the pillars of ice. Although sometimes if you're a little too fast and you run towards the other side of the arena straight away, the first diagonal line, the pillar can actually spawn where you're running too, so you want to hug the wall first and then move diagonally. It's hard to explain, 
but you'll find out in practice. And sometimes the pillars of ice just spawn in a weird location anyway and you will take a hit. If you don't want to take any risks because you're doing a high rage, I recommend using the barricade ability to reduce all damage taken after moving to one side of the arena. Now since the beams deal typers damage, there isn't much else you can do other than maybe boosting your HP by using a power burst of vitality. Now if you're very unlucky, you can get this mechanic back to back. If your barricade is on cooldown, what you can do to survive yet again is by using Immortality. Immortality allows you to die once safely, but keep in mind you still want to avoid the beams because if you die early and the beams hit you after you've been revived by the Immortality ability, you can still get killed. So avoid the beams like you would normally, try and eat up, keep your health high, it's just a sort of safety net in case you do get beamed out and die. Oh, and having access to Bladed Dive, Double Surge and the Mobile Park can be very useful for this section of the boss. The next mechanic is the frost cannon mechanic. Now this is the instant kill mechanic and it will kill you if you don't use the right abilities. This mechanic can spawn on both the east and western side of the arena but also in the direct middle. You can see this mechanic coming by the amount of ice that is actually on the floor and the limited amount of space you have. Usually around two of those big ice chunks you can see on each side of the arena is how much space you'll have and this is how you can predict the frost cannon mechanic. This mechanic stuns you and deals a huge amount of damage. In normal mode you can simply resonance the attack without any prayers and get a fat heal. In hard mode, as it hits multiple times, the thing you want to be doing is using the Devotion ability and of course keeping your Protect from Magic on. If you want to avoid the stun, you can use Anticipation in advance as well, or use Freedom after the beam hits you. You can then obviously proceed by attacking the boss. If you find yourself in the unlucky situation where you get this mechanic back to back, you want to use Anticipation or Freedom to remove the stun that's going to happen, use Debilitate, equip your shield and then use Reflect, and even a power burst of vitality if you have it in your inventory. Otherwise, there's a high chance of you dying. You can also resonance the last hit, but I wouldn't try it because it's very tricky to time and it will end up getting you killed if you're inexperienced. The reason I was talking about Limitless and an Adrenaline Potion earlier is because you can quickly get yourself up to use Devotion if you don't have high Adrenaline with either the Adrenaline Potion or the Limitless ability which allows you to use thresholds at 15% Adrenaline. I personally only use Limitless as a sort of safety net for the Frost Cannon mechanic. Next up is the Frozen Core aka Arms mechanic. This mechanic always occurs in the center of the arena arena where the Glacier drops his arms down. These arms have 17,500 health each in normal mode or 32,500 in hard mode. While the arms are down, the Frozen Core hits you with rapid magic attacks which increase in damage every single hit. All you need to do is DPS down a single arm in about 20 seconds because after that your chances of surviving are starting to go into the single digits. After about 24 to 25 seconds the hits are in the thousands and you're most likely already dead unless your enhanced devoted perk went off or you use devotion which you shouldn't be doing in which case you have a few more seconds. After destroying one arm, move out of the core's reach and attack the boss to continue the fight because otherwise you will die there. Two more tips for these arms, you can use a flanking switch of course, and you can use the revenge ability in case you're using a defender or prizer to get an extra 100% damage. Next up are the minions, now these are more of a distraction really. There's four glacites and they have 2500 health or 13500 in hard mode. At 250% in rage and high you'll also have a bolstered glacite with 27000 health. This minion adds frozen blood debuff stacks every time it hits you and at 10 stacks you will get stunned. Although I've never actually been stunned by the minion yet, if you have low DPS that might happen. If you're doing hard mode with range what I personally do is I equip mechanized chompers, I throw one bleed at the minions and then use snapshots and some other abilities to finish them off or I use one bleed and then I use my EOF dark bow spec and basically wipe wipe them off the planet and then focus on the single bolstered glacite after that. Flurry is the final mechanic we need to cover and this is where the boss starts switching with his attack styles. In normal mode it's simply magic and ranged. In hard mode he switches to melee as well. If you want to have a slightly easier time recognizing the attacks I recommend you switch to the freedom camera mode and zoom out all the way. 
The Fari mechanic is the part of the fight where I think you can deal the most amount of damage by using Death Swiftness and then using your Threshold. But you do need to keep an eye on the boss as you're going to need to switch your prayers constantly. If you want to take some stress off of your shoulders at high rages, I recommend using Debilitate during this phase to reduce the damage you take. You can also equip your shield and get a fat free heal during this phase as well using Resonance. A ranged attack looks like this and can be indicated by the green cloud. With the melee attack, you can see he's about to swipe you and this is the easiest one to spot or recognize. If he doesn't lower his arm and you don't see a green cloud and you do see him pulling his arm all the way back behind his shoulders, which he doesn't have, it's going to be a magic attack. To show you guys how all of these mechanics work in practice, I'm going to show you a full uncut kill at 100% in raid using Royal Dragon Hide and a Royal Crossbow, utilizing Overloads, Curses, and Ruby per Criminal Bolts. I think this will be more useful to you to see than me blasting through the enrages at 0 to 500% using my best gear, expensive supplies, switches, and so on. At the start of the kill, you'd want to activate your Reckless or Maniacal Aura, sip your Overload, and get ready. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and use my Death Swiftness straight away at the start of the kill, though if you want to be safe, you can wait a few auto attacks to see if you get the Pillars of Ice mechanic, which I do, which means my Death Swiftness is basically wasted. No matter though, we move to the southwestern corner and we get ready for the Pillars of Ice mechanic. We wait until we're in line with the mechanic and we move out of the way, we sip our Power Boost of Vitality to be safe, double HP by the way, and we keep zigzagging around them. As you can see, the beams have now ended, and we're going to get the arms or the cannon, and it's the arms. This is a DPS race, we keep our magic prey on, and we want to do as much damage as possible. We start by using our bleeds, and then we use snapshot, tendrils, and rapid fire to get ourselves out of these arms as quickly as possible. One thing to keep in mind here is to keep your health high in case you do stand in these arms for too long, as the hits will start to get higher. Once we're out, we're back onto the boss, and you might see me flick soul split here and there to save on some food. This is absolutely not necessary at 100% in rage, and you should sh just pray magic. Keep it easy. Now we see the text box saying the Archelaisor focuses his attacks, which means it's flurry time. This means you want to drop your death swiftness and start DPSing the boss while flicking your prayers accordingly. Keep an eye on those attacks, because they will hit hard. If you want, you can grab a resonance using your shield, but this isn't required at 100% rage unless you're somehow running out of food. Alright, we see the next mechanic coming in, and it's probably going to be the arms again, or the frost cannon, but most likely the frost cannon. So we keep our adrenaline high at around 50% so we can use devotion. Anticipation, devotion, we're safe, we cannot get stunned, and we keep attacking the boss while he tries to blow us off the planet. Alright, now we're just going to deal some more damage, heal up a bit, and wait for the next mechanic. We're going to keep our adrenaline somewhat high just in case. Oh, it's minions. And we equip our Chinchompas and offhand kill at crossbow, and we chin them down. Nothing to worry about. You can occasionally soul split here as well to heal back a bit, but it's not required to flick. Once the minions are down, we click the orbs for that reflect damage, and we try and resonance here. Not sure why, not necessary, but it is possible. Again, you can do it for the entirety of the fight, and you can basically no food the boss that way. Now, the next thing I do is actually quite risky. I see the creeping eyes come in, and I build up to Death Swiftness. I grab my Planet Feet Switch. And I use Death Swiftness. Now, what if that was the cannon mechanic? I would not have had Adrenaline for Devotion unless I quickly used my Adrenaline Potion, or if I use Limitless, which I'm not using in this footage. This is exactly why I'm not using my Adrenaline Potion as often as you might think you would want to use it here, because in this case, since I don't have Limitless, well, I do, but I'm not using it, that Adrenaline Potion is my safety net for if I get back-to-back -back cannons, or I need adrenaline. Of course, you can also use Hydrix Bacrimal Bolts to counter this problem, or keep your adrenaline high, and just... It's just in case, okay? Alright, the Creeping Eyes is coming back in again, and it seems we're gonna get the cannon on the arms again, because it's in the dead center. I'm not so sure at this point. Trying to get some health back, and it's the cannon. So, we have adrenaline, we use Devotion, and we're gonna use Freedom here, I believe, to reduce the stun, as we didn't use Anticipate. We can attack the boss again, you see me trying to switch to my Sun Spear for whatever reason, just ignore that. I'm back onto the boss. Now, if you were using vulnerability bombs, you could just drop them right now and deal some more damage. 
Okay, look, that's definitely the Pillars of Ice, aka Beam Attack. So we're going to move back to that southwestern corner and get ready. Now, if you have 100% adrenaline, the time to barricade would be... Move here. Now. You would want to barricade now. However, since I know I'll be able to avoid the mechanics mostly, I'm just going to use a power boost of vitality here and save my adrenaline. That being said, if you're on a high streak or on high in rage, you would want to barricade just to be safe. Now, you see that melee slap there? That was really quick and unexpected, and that can happen when the boss is phasing. Sometimes, right after Flurry, you will have minions, and then suddenly you get a melee slap out of nowhere, and it's going to hurt, especially if you're at high in rage. Alright, seems like we have Flurry again, and we're about to have minions. There we go, so we equip our Chin Chompers again, AoE down the minions, and pretty much the entire fight is going to feel very, very similar. In this case, I don't get any mechanics back-to-back, -back, which means the fight is fairly normal. Now, I'll use the final portion of the boss fight to talk about some things. Now, this is a 100% enraged kill, and yes, I'm doing it with overloads, I'm using curses, but even without those, you'll be able to do this. It isn't particularly difficult. Yes, the DPSing part is difficult, the beams can be difficult to adjust to and to learn, and if you're bad at managing your adrenaline, it's going to be tough with the cannon as well. That's why I recommend the adrenaline potion, because it helps a lot. Thankfully, most of the mechanics at 100% are quite forgiving, but at 500% or 700%, the auto attacks are really high, so if you miss a prayer flick, it's going to cost you. But by the time you make it to that point, you're going to feel rather acquainted to the boss anyway. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing, and I wish you the best of luck at the Arc Glacier. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.